probably the first thing is the condemnation is important. I mean, it, I'd like to see China take a pretty strong position. Um, I think one of the lessons of this whole process uh, through the six party talk is is that uh, china u s solidarity is critical um and 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 I think China may be more willing to join with the United States in trying to to thwart north korea's nuclear weapons ambitions and so I think the in when this moves to the Security Council, the solidarity is going to be the most important thing, and that's going to have to be developed and I think that can also be um, developed over the longer term to start putting more pressure on North Korea. And I, we know North Korea banks in China. Well, the, if China goes along, the financial sanctions can hurt North Korea deeply. Um, we know North Korea buys a lot of things in China for all kinds of military programs and its nuclear weapons programs. If China would enforce UN Security Council resolutions, its own trade control laws, invest in finding out what North Korea is doing, um, it could cause serious damage to North Koreans' ability to, to outfit many programs. So I think, again, it, I think in this case, we're going to, the working with China, establishing kind of uh, unanimity is going to be very important. And I think China is shifting. I think they are starting to see that they can pressurize North Korea and it won't collapse the North Korean state, which is their biggest fear. And so I think we'll see how that develops, but I think that's certainly, from my point of view, an important way forward. So I think that uh, it is very clear that uh, up to this point, China and the United States, while they have the common goal of a you know, denuclearized uh, Korean peninsula, the priorities are different. And up to this point for, North, for China, it has been to avoid collapse uh, and uh, to increase stability. So... Um, I think there's some, you know, intense discussion going on in China about whether they hold on to their traditional view of what North, of North Korea or whether they should change it or not. That being said, while North Korea, while China is uh, a necessary piece to this, it's not, it cannot solve it on its own. And I think what this is what David was talking about. I think to this point, it's, I think it's safe to say that the United States, uh, South Korea, uh, on one, and Japan, on one hand, um, have been on a slightly different page from China uh, on the other. And so what's happening is that pressure on the front end is coming through China, uh, uh, through the Chinese border, literally through the back end. And so I think what has to happen is really China and the United States, uh, South Korea and Japan really being on the same page and talking about a coordinated strategy. That's not easy to do. But it has been done in the past. I, I, you know, I, I point to the Perry process in which people said that uh, the United States, South Korea, and Japan could not be on the same path and come up with a common strategy, and in fact, that did happen. So uh, I think there are things that we can do over the medium term. Uh, the short term are the new normal things of condemnation uh, and, and uh, you know, stepping up pressure in different ways. I think the financial sanctions have shown that they can be very effective. Um, so uh, those are sort of possibilities there. Certainly, I think political unity is is something we want to um, build, and we can build on the UN Security Council Resolution 2087 that was unanimously passed last month in reaction to the December 12th three-stage rocket launch. Um, so that's a good thing to build on. We, in that resolution, promised uh, the world that there would be harsher reactions to the next provocation, especially hinting at a nuclear test. Now that that nuclear test has occurred, we have to make sure that wasn't an empty threat. I think we need a comprehensive approach to uh, dealing with North Korea, and it has to be a, a, a long-term approach. It can't simply be done, something done this month or next month. Um, it requires both military and non-military measures, and it requires both pressure and uh, incentives. On the military side, we need to go ahead and reinforce the defensive mechanisms uh, with especially our South Korean ally. Um, at the same time, we need to make sure that U.S. forces in Korea and the U.S. Uh, and the uh, ROK forces uh, have a very clear rules of understanding uh, and rules of engagement for dealing with a, a, a local provocation across the northern limit line or demilitarized zone or in cyberspace or elsewhere. Um, the two countries have been working very assiduously on that. That needs to be embedded in a more regional discussion on these military measures as well with Japan, but also with China, Russia, and others. Um, on the non-military side, we need to think about exactly these kind of targeted financial measures that were picked up in this latest UN Security Council resolution and aimed at the space launch um, sort of organization and scientists. 
we now need to target this, as David suggested, I think, at the Kim family regime uh, pocketbook so that Kim Jong-un knows that there really is uh, a hardship to, uh, to be borne um, from this kind of uh, violation and defiance of the international community. Um, we still need to lead this to a political settlement in the long term, and that means we always need to leave the door open to discussion, but this is not the time for uh, empty dialogue with North Korea. Kim Jong-un's had a chance. He's the one who struck the Leap Day Accord and, and then abandoned it, and now has had two major provocations uh, in the last three months. So this is a time for some pressure. 